happen, but anyway. <laughs> Woo! Okay, the meeting. Live stream. Yeah. Oh, live Got stream. It. Okay. What does, that, what does that mean? <laughs> Going on to my Flexifit page so people can watch if they want from Facebook. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Okay, so I think it's live. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Sorry. Live. Okay, okay, well. Hey, hey Jocelyn. Hi. Oh, Jocelyn. Jocelyn, what have you been up to? Um, lots of things. Uh, so I actually ended up working in HR for a little bit and then oh. did a segue. So I'm actually also a licensed RMT. Oh, um, but now I'm actually back in HR with doing like my mobile business on the side. So, wow. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't know my sister. My sister's got the pigtails. Hi, Astra. I heard of you, <laughs> but I've never met you. Yeah, no, I, I heard of you too. <laughs> so I think uh, Rachel is uh, going to join the meeting at some point and yes. possibly uh, Karen if she can make it. But yeah. uh, this is a coaching time, right? Yeah, it is. And honestly, it was a quite a last minute little thing we put together. So it was uh, just whoever was available. So I appreciate you all joining and uh, Astra and I are going to co host uh, <laughs> this little <laughs> event. It's nothing formal, really. It's more yeah. just, you know, <laughs> happy birthday, Mrs. Burka. And, uh, yeah. you know, it's her 100th year. <laughs> I don't have a drink, but I have water. Um, <laughs> well, I, have, uh, I have my tea. And yeah. I have <laughs> cold espresso. Oh, uh, very nice. That looks very, very lovely. And um, yeah, I just wanted to start by just, um, you know, for those who know Mrs. Verka, you know, obviously what an incredible person she was. Um, yeah. And for those who don't know Mrs. Verka, I mean, we have Petra and Astra here who are both the daughters of Mrs. Burka and um, she was, uh, well, she's part of the Canadian Sports Hall of Fame. She was an international uh, coach and choreographer for many, many great skaters, including Petra, who was, uh, if I have this correct, 1964 bronze Olympic medalist and 1965 world champion. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. I did my research, but I was <laughs> like, I have to make sure I get the very good. Seeing me, it goes. You're going a long way back. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, that Avery! Oh my goodness, Avery! Did she make it? She's right there. Oh, We're rounding the troops. <laughs> is, it, is it a photo? Oh, there she is. <laughs> Hi, Hi, welcome. Hi. Hi. Oh, Hi. Gosh. <laughs> so yeah, I was just kind of finishing off with um. And Taller Cranston, she coached Taller Cranston, who was also a very, very famous uh, figure skater. And um, I think what we're all here today to do is, you know, celebrate the great moments uh, we all had with her and to remember her on these hundred, on the hundredth year. And yeah. uh, with that being said, I think, uh, Astrid, did you want to say something before I show a nice little slideshow we put together, courtesy oh. of yeah. <laughs> as, as Peter said, we both went to visit mother at the Mount Pleasant Cemetery. She wanted to be buried there, not in a Jewish cemetery, but in Mount Pleasant. <laughs> and um, we put on her plaque, Ellen Burka, when she was born, 1921, when she died in, 19, in 2016. And we said, figure skating legend. Mm. And that's plaque. it. Yeah. And that's it. it. So, um, <laughs> and she chose a spot near a bench where we could sit and look at the fountain and uh like she kind of pictured that we would be there and where where we would be sitting and it's the most beautiful spot i have to say so she's in she's in a good place yeah in her memories hi rachel can she <laughs> oh. am i muted oh no i'm good no. Hi. Oh, Astro's here too. Yeah, hi, Rachel. <laughs> it's been such a long time. I think it's like five years since I've seen you both. I know. I know. I know. My COVID hair. <laughs> when, I like I, it. When, I, when I see Rachel, I think of, here's a fu funny stories, but Rachel and I used to shop for my mother in the last year or two. And my mother would make lists, but they were specific. And both yeah. Rachel and I would go to the lot. store and like shake. Cause like I remember she wanted a certain kind of a soup 
but I couldn't find it. And, you know, I was looking on Google to see what it looked like. And I mean, I was like freaking out because my mother, she <laughs> yeah, yeah, every yeah. grocery. And like once I bought her <laughs> um, asparagus, she said, uh, why did you get the big, big spear asparagus? I only like the little one, you know, and she would still be like a coach in a way, <laughs> in a way we were terrified yeah. to stop her, but we loved it anyway. It was so cute. Sorry. What's that? She made me take stuff back to the store. Oh, <laughs> did she? <laughs> yeah. Not I surprised. Telling me how I could hear her voice. <laughs> no, it, it would like my mom would just say, you know, this is a list, and it would be specific. And like she didn't like potatoes with too many eyes. I found out, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> So she was still kind of uh, being in charge right up to the very end. Yeah. I just we, heard the, what is that? Like when yeah. you, like when she, <laughs> yeah. What is that? Yeah, I know that. <laughs> you know, Potatoes have too many eyes. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> that is too accurate. That is <laughs> <laughs> Memories. I'm really. <laughs> yeah. Aw. I just wanted to, um, before we dive into all of those amazing memories, I just wanted to share a little um, uh, slideshow that my mom actually put together with just photos that, you know, we found and people sent us and stuff. So if we start with that, here we go. Let me know if you can see the shared screen. Aww. 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 Can you see that? Yeah. yeah that's okay, beautiful. So here we go. Oh. oh, that's when she was young. <laughs> oh, listen to the music. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna cry in a moment. Oh, Astro's already crying. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, that was so oh. nice, Signe. With music and everything. She would have been a bit critical of your musical choice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Always. She would have wanted Mozart or I know. Yeah. <laughs> she would have known my mother. Or Tchaikovsky. <laughs> well, it was interesting. Just um oh. Petra is telling me a story um, when she was going into the worlds in 1966, mother chose uh, Sleeping Beauty Tchaikovsky for her program. And all the judges and everyone told mother, you cannot have one piece of music for the program. In those days you had to have fast, slow and fast. So they made her change her music. And then Karen Magnuson told me that she wanted to skate on rough one enough. And uh, the judges said, no, you can't skate on rock one enough because it's one piece, you have to have the three. So it was very old fashioned in the time when Peter was skating that they were very, very, you know, like still in the old world. Oh, there's Karen too. <laughs> you made it. I, I, I told my skater in North Carolina that I would be late for her virtual lesson. So I have, so her, so just her, a, tell us a few. Story. A few yeah. minutes to say hello and happy birthday in heaven and we all miss you and we think of you all the time. I uh, I do a good impression of your mom each day at the cricket. I know you so, do. It. She, do it. She, li she lives on in, in all of us, as I'm sure you know. <laughs> but do, do the impression. 
What is that? <laughs> what are you doing? I can't believe you're doing it like that. <laughs> now do it again. Run for your life. <laughs> oh, two Janet Lins, one Donald McPherson. That's it. That's it. Good, good. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Well, I mean, I had 13 years to like absorb it by osmosis. <laughs> yeah. So oh, I love it. Do yeah. you have any funny stories or any stories about my our my mom uh, when he was coaching you? Um, I have two. Um, okay. My very first day at the cricket, she was not yet my coach. I came with Wally Distelmeyer, oh, yeah. and um, she was very interested in you looking the part. <laughs> And uh, Monica Lipson was on the patch next to me or two down. And she went, Monica, I tell you, you have to make nice hair. <laughs> so the next day on patch, Monica, I tell you yesterday, you have to make nice hair. And she came out and she grabbed Monica by the ponytail <laughs> and snipped her ponytail off. And I literally went home that day and went, mom, I have to get my hair cut. <laughs> I mean, so that was that was my introduction and then um many many years later she altered the course of my life my career everything oh. she came into the rink and I was going around doing circles I was a pupil of Ozzy Colson's and figures had come out but I was desperate to get my eighth figure and she walked in and she said what are you doing said, well I'm, I'm I'm doing I'm gonna get my eighth test why? I said, well, you know, I, I need it. I'm going to need it. What if I want to coach? I've got to finish my eighth. And she said, what do you want next year? So what do you mean? She said, what's your goal? And I said, well, I'd like to win my national title back. And going around in circles, is that going to help you get your goal? I said, no. And she said, then you need to be in a ballet class. You need to be in a hip hop class. You need, she was so far ahead of her time. And I looked at her and I said, mm -hmm. what? And she goes, don't even worry about figures. By the time you're coaching, it will be Jurassic Park. <laughs> she goes, go to ballet class, go to hip hop oh, class. Wow. What year yeah. was that, Karen? That would have been spring of 1990. So okay. right yeah. after the Halifax Worlds. Right, the last and year through skating. She, she was just, every time, she was constantly ahead of her time. I remember mm -hmm. her choreographing for Tracy Wilson to Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Yeah, I love and that. And nobody ever did. Like, it was just so avant-garde and so out there. And she was just, she, she was leaps and bounds ahead of everybody else. Yeah. And she was, she mm -hmm. was brilliant. And I, and I can tell you that that moment when she said, is that going to help you achieve your goal? She wasn't even my coach at the time. But the fact that she had the foresight to direct an athlete that, you know, it wasn't going to bring her glory. It was going to no. fix my situation. And it, it did, it changed everything. And I, I stopped doing what I was doing. And two years later, she and I were standing in Albertville together at the Olympics. Oh. And you had a wonderful <laughs> competition, but I, she told yes. me that she had to put you in, into shape before the free. Well, I'm not sure I should share that story. Yes, <laughs> um so again ahead of her time um if you've ever seen those airplane movies you know the comical airplane movies where the plane is going down and the guy's like shaking the stewardess and getting their <laughs> stuff together I had done my six minute warm-up and missed every single solitary jump and um I got off the warm-up and I just eyes like this like in a different planet and she just marched me off into the men's locker room because she knew that would be empty because the men's event was over. Mm -hmm. And she just turned around and she said, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> and I was so shocked that it snapped me out of where I was. And it was exactly what I needed in that moment. And then again, ahead of her time, she had my attention and she said, what's the first jump in your program? I said, uh, a triple sap. You tell me how to do it. Walk it through. You tell me. So I put my arm here and I do this and I put my leg here and I go like this and I did it. Next jump. And we went through every jump in chronological order. And she looked at me and she said, your homework is done. And I and made it a cl clean law. Best program of my life. Wow. Again, ahead of yeah. her time. She knew how to tap in, yeah. in this part. Well, yeah. everything else is working. 
Well, mm -hmm. I just uh, go back to history in the 1950s, way before you were born. Lakeshore Arena, uh, where she was teaching, she brought Carmen on ice and she had Spanish dancers with castanets <laughs> yes, right. on a platform. And then after that, when she was in her Spanish phase, she would have castanets. And when everyone was doing the figures, they do a three or a rocker, she clicked the castanet. <laughs> they would turn. Yeah, click. Time to do your rocker. Click. I love it. I and I think it. she did the similar thing with Taller, the same situation where he went out at some event in uh, International Worlds or something and forgot every jump for, and did mm -hmm. the same thing. She took him in the dressing room. He came out and he landed everything. But he was like, you know, his eyes were rolling, you know, how tall it could be. And like, he couldn't do, like, he just said, Mrs. Burke, I forgot how to skate. Mm -hmm. And she put him in a room and God knows what she told him, but probably similar. He went out and did a clean program. But it, but that was so many years before anybody was talking about um, psychology, health, psychology, mm -hmm. awareness, paying yep. attention to the, you know, the skater's anxiety I mean talk about rearranging your focus and getting you to to focus on the technical rather than the emotional mm -hmm. I mean, it, was, yep. it was a brilliant maneuver yeah yeah and it's something that I you know took from that and learned and have implemented numerous times not quite in the same format because nowadays we, nowadays we, we're not allowed to do that <laughs> <It's not allowed. laughs> but yeah, um yeah very similar very similar yeah you have I, to be I, I have a story oh you go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, I just wanted to jump in. I had a very similar story um, at, in Bulgaria at a Junior Grand Prix uh, for my short program. I went on warm up and I, I don't even know what I was doing. I was probably like looking around and popping things. And uh, I got off the ice and she, uh, I was the first skater and she's like, get off the ice. And I got off the <laughs> ice and she, she's like, turn around. And I was like, okay. And she slapped me so hard in the butt. <laughs> And I think I was the most like embarrassed that I first of all hurt a lot. She was pretty tough. And then, oh and then, my god! And she, she's like, "Go and skate your program." And I was like, "Okay." And I was more scared of her than the judge <laughs> watching to get off the ice that she was getting. Did you did you skate a good program? I came in third place at that junior <laughs> program. Fantastic. We were not allowed to slap anymore. I never did get slapped. <laughs> But, um, I, remember she, I remember she used to have skate guards and hit people on the legs when they were doing figures. Well, she would just grab stuff from behind her because she would just stand on the table and then everyone would put guards and then her purse was there. <laughs> no, I remember when she had her cane, she would hit us with her cane. Oh, yes. oh I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, she would always smack us with her cane. God, that my mother was into kidding people no no you know what it was oh poor Astra's <laughs> getting like a whole new uh, background on my mom but it, it was all done with love and love for you, wish for you to excel yeah uh, now we can't do it unfortunately yeah. well fortunately <laughs> but look at us all we love my mom look she probably changed all of our lives mm -hmm. despite the fact that she might have slapped you oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you know what sometimes sometimes you need it sometimes you need a good swift kick in the you pants know what? these days kids are so soft i wish once in a while you could slap them in the face you know just to start no because well, they're I, like the I, new I, generation is just too soft yeah well i mean i'm not for kind of physical stuff but no. I think <laughs> no. but what mother did i think is teach people discipline because yeah. and I think that's what Karen was coming through and with yeah. Sydney, it's like, that's what's missing these days is a kind of honest discipline where you yeah. actually, you know, or you're focused, you do your job and it actually makes you better. And, and she came from the old um, school of training like Gus Lucy and all those old coaches from those times when they were trained with that type of European style discipline. And, mm -hmm. and that's what's lacking today. People just don't have any focus anymore. You know, it's all Instagram and Facebook and, you know, TikTok and things. But, you know, it's like good old fashioned, just focusing on yourself. Yeah. And, and I think that's kind of what people can carry, come away with with my mother. 
Yeah. yeah. I, w- I wish I could stay longer, but I've oh, already pushed my young lady in North Carolina off. Aww. But I, I wanted to let both of you know and, and the community that is Mrs. Burke's alumni that she is most definitely living on amongst all of us. And she forever changed so many people's lives for the better. Thank mm-hmm. you. So happy, so- happy birthday, Mrs. B. Thank you. Bye, Karen. guys. Bye, Karen. Bye. 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 <laughs> so sweet. <laughs> Are a lot of people listening? Uh, we have people on Facebook listening. Yeah. I so. <laughs> well, I, 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 I put back the uh, slot thing. Oh, Pika, <laughs> I think it's, you know, I think it just comes back to it's true, like the discipline part and uh, maybe just, you know, the kids kind of get away with a lot of things on the ice. Exactly. And yeah. Almost like you gotta, you gotta get them focused and stay on track and, and the, you know, just coaching myself now I realized how uh, important it was to learn from Mrs. Verka because you know you can get away with so much and and sometimes it slips like you know where you're you continue you know I had sometimes the a little bit of uh, attitude as a teenager too you know we all go through that stuff yeah. and, and uh, you know sometimes when you didn't like what you were hearing you would you know be like oh, I don't think you're right or whatever but you know sometimes the truth hurts and you have to take it and it's all that she will just always at the end of the day now looking back it was all she just wanted you to be better and and do better and I'm sure it was all about love and making sure that you did got the best that you were capable of doing that she saw the talent and wanted to bring it out exactly yeah Yeah. Yeah. she was able to bring the best out of everyone Um, she could make um, dead flowers blossom you know, like she would just, you know, like that's what her forte was, is that she had a, she had kind of ESP and she could see through everyone and she could also see what, you know, were the great qualities of each of the skaters and and Mm -hmm. she was able to bring that out. And I think that's kind of what helped everyone who was taught by her is that she gave something. Sorry to interfere, but, or interrupt, but, um, Taller, for instance, Taller Cranston, he arrived at the, to my mother's like a totally odd bird, you know, like she'd never seen anything like it. And he was like arms moving and body moving. And in those days, skaters, male skaters were supposed to like be stiff, arms at waist level, you can't move them above your head. And what she decided to do with him was just let him be free. She said, I don't care about the rules, just be free, explore. And he was one of the first to be um, a pioneer Mm -hmm. in the artistic skating because she had an open enough mind that she would allow him to be what he wanted to be instead of these are the rules and you must put your arms here. She said, fly them around, it's okay. And you know, he he came to the top of the world and skating changed. Mm -hmm. I think. There's a lot of, uh, you know, really, really amazing things that she did. I remember Theater on Ice and um, all of the girls here. I just, I'm so excited to see everybody. And I think it's just like looking at you all, like it just takes me by. I'm like, I want to go skating with you all. Um, You know, uh, I just remember Theater on Ice and like her movements and we would all be dying. She would just stand there like one, two. (laughs) We would try it and pull a muscle is what would happen. That's you know what, the, the, that's exactly what she was like the hilarious thing about theater on ice yeah. uh, with theater on ice one. all of the Avery, all of the music, like all of the musical choices that she used in theater on ice and even all of the musical selections is what sticks with me because like right now my mother-in-law is takes care of my son um like two hours of the day and she plays classical music uh, just on Amazon and the number of times a song will come out and I will hear Mrs. B's voice and I oh. would just remember like a like a routine that she choreographed like Joe you'll remember the bluebird that will come on and yeah, all I will the- hear in my head is like Avery you're not fluttering enough Flutter. <laughs> <laughs> um and instead of just like hearing it for the music, I actually hear it with Mrs. B's voice in the background, which is the amazing. Just the number, the number of just classical music that just comes out with her in, in my mind is incredible. Or, or even the wild music. Like she'd have like the wild yeah. music. Yeah. Like very with it. Oh my she, God. 
I, I remember Jocelyn, like I, I was coaching for a long time after, and uh, there's so many skaters who uh, wanted to skate to dance, like dance macabre, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where every time I choreograph, Jocelyn would be in my head and <laughs> on the side and they're doing right. the choreography. And I just remember at the cricket club, like that was like my favorite thing. I would try to copy you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you a, a funny story about a theater on ice that my mom did. Ryan Orser invited her to the cricket of, of like maybe six, seven summers ago uh, for one of the seminars and or whenever, uh, maybe it was eight, 10 years ago, I don't know. Anyway, he had a group of people and or she, she had a group of people and she was trying to get them to do like various things. And then she had them all do spins and things as well. And then there was uh, one skater and she pointed her out, girl in red, that's not good enough. It was Una Kim. <laughs> because my mother didn't care. You know, she's like, girl in the red, bend back more. <laughs> she must have been like, oh my gosh. Oh no. She, well, no, my mom didn't care. I don't care. I said, mom, that's Una Kim. I don't care. <laughs> she needs to bend more. <laughs> so oh, that's that's my mom. So Paulette, so any any stories from you? Oh man, just back on the choreography, I remember her, she choreographed at, at the end an interpretive uh, program to this jungle music and it was just wild. And she <laughs> must have been, I don't, I don't know, in her eighties. And she would be, she'd be standing up and moving around like a cat. And she'd be like, you have to be like a jaguar. And she'd like, do all these moves. And then she's like, and you're like a lion and like, go on. It was just, it was amazing to see someone just so much in their element and just so comfortable in their own space and their own body. And it was just, oh my goodness, that it just like takes me back. I actually yeah. think I remember that because the oh. you are a jaguar just like resonated with me. <laughs> and I just remember like, did she run onto the ice at one point too? Oh, and we were all sure. freaking out. Like I think we're all like, no. Yeah, like <laughs> how embodied the, yeah. the jaguar and the lion and the bear. Like just it was such a an out there piece that she could really just wrap herself in there and, and really have fun. And it was it was a lot of fun. Oh. Yeah. So that's just a little one. There's, there's also, I mean, um, Peter and Astro know, but Mrs. Burke is very close to my whole family. So my yeah. aunt and my mom, she taught, she taught both of them. Roberta. And, uh, I, I talked to my aunt last night and she was just like, Mrs. Burke, she's lovely, lovely lady, lady, like a second mom to her. And that she was just so kind, but firm, always there when you needed her. Um, she was saying that she used to pick my aunt up from school if she couldn't get to the rink. For some reason, she was always there if she if she needed a place to go, and just like all these amazing memories of uh, yeah. how she really yeah. helped develop. Um, I mean, all of us really, and I think that goes back to um, the discipline and the work ethic that she kind of instilled in all of us. And I remember going to her place and visiting her um, in the later years, and she would just like rave about all of her last students and just yeah. so proud, even if they weren't in the skating community. Yeah. But that um, the work ethic really stayed with us in our studies and our careers. Yeah, because look at everyone. They're yeah. doing it so well. I mean, that whatever she did was the right thing. Yeah. Speaking of love, love. we spent a lot of time with her, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and development uh, years, like really key years. So, what yeah. she did also um, when she passed away, I found this check. Um, for a thousand dollars or twelve hundred dollars, it was in the days when Jay Humphrey was skating. This was in the, um, I guess, seventies, and um, he came from not so well-to-do background. His father, I think, was a fireman, and and I think someone else, one of the other coaches, said, "We'll take you on. You know, we'll sponsor you." And and Jay went to mother and said, "You know, Mrs. Burka, you know, I've been offered this money to." take from another coach and mother said don't worry I'll find you a sponsor she paid for it himself herself she sponsored mm -hmm. Jay never told him he never knew till yep. after he died we phoned Jay and told him that we found the check 
that mother had written to sponsor Jay. I mean, can you believe like she would do because she believed in her students and helped them out. And I thought that was such a, and Jay really loved the story, you know. So I just, she was very generous too. With and her. Jay did well. I think mm -hmm. he was an, a world competitor, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. I think top it was five? top seven or top Yeah, seven. <laughs> but like that was my mom, the heart of gold. Yes. You know, like mm -hmm. uh, there was like armor in front, but underneath the kindest heart of gold. Yeah. Yes. What is she? I remember she used to say, I scream like a lion, but I'm kind like a lamb or something yeah. like that. Like, and I, and there are times where she would just scream and then you see her like soften a little bit. And then it was just funny because it wasn't until like I got older that I kind of realized that that was just a front. But she, and she actually <laughs> cared. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to tell you, I haven't worn makeup since March 2020. <laughs> Today's the first day and now it's all dripping. Oh, yeah, dear. I also was regretting putting <laughs> on some eye makeup. I was like, maybe this is a bad idea. <laughs> I have lipstick on because I knew I'd cry. Oh. <laughs> so, um, Avery, have you got any stories? No, it was um, the... I think the one thing that really, really resonates for me is that um, a lot of the discipline that she definitely taught us is something that I think I carry with me throughout every single thing I do. Like mm -hmm. even through work, even through the way like I run my career and stuff. So like people say like, how do you have such work ethic and how do you have such discipline? And I do think I credit it back to her. Like, oh. and I do want to also credit her for just being such a strong female role model for all of us, even back then. Um, I think I think we were all very lucky to have been like trained, um, good and bad. Um, like it was tough, but I don't think it was um, it was something that we would ever regret because for us to have a found this community like especially all, um, all of us as strong women but then having her kind of at the helm of that a lot of it can definitely be credited back yeah. to her and wow. I yeah um I I think I had two programs that she did and I still remember like she was down to the detail in terms of what color she wanted the dress to be um and um I think I had the opposite problem where I was too stiff and so the whole thing whenever I skated her thing was like trying to get me to loosen up I still not loosened up at all but <laughs> just remembering her just to be like just let your arms yeah, she would go, just really go. go. <laughs> like just go, yeah, go like that I feel like I she still, used to like I'll grab your like arm and get yeah. you to try yeah. and like <laughs> yeah. like like shake me yeah. <laughs> like I have to admit Theodore and I I was absolutely terrified those are some of the <laughs> scariest things I've ever had to do um but yeah even like um just having her presence at competitions and stuff was I never got the the physical beatings and stuff but even just having her there was definitely um you were definitely more terrified of her than the judges I definitely admit that but okay. it was also really nice having her because I think you knew that she supported you there too so I, I, I've been away for a very long time, so I wasn't able to see her at, in the last couple of years, but I definitely do think about her a lot. That's so sweet. I have to tell you about my mom, because I was one of her first competitors that was doing well um, when she first started coaching in Canada. And when I would compete, like, you know what a toughie she is. She would run to the washroom and flush the toilet when I jumped. So she wouldn't hear if I landed it or not. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. I actually think I remember you <laughs> telling me that. Yes. Like she, like she didn't, but I mean, I was her daughter. So she was worried. I mean, but later on she would come to the side, but at the beginning she wasn't even there because <laughs> she didn't want to know how I did. <laughs> that is a side I didn't expect. <laughs> yeah. That was like maybe 50 we're going way back oh really <laughs> yeah but That's not weird. in Prague she didn't huh? run, she didn't run away in Prague in Prague but that was uh when you were oh yeah no no by then she she was used to watching me but I think when she first uh had me as a student competing she didn't like she was afraid you know for me 
So I think all moms are right. So yeah. she had that half yeah. like coach, yeah. but mom. That, yeah, she had to find that happy medium. And at the beginning, she was a mom and worried for me. So she'd run away and I go, Where's my mother? <laughs> <laughs> but then when I got older, I got to the Olympics, and those were the good old days of the Olympics, and we were in Innsbruck. And it was the first time I was separated from her proper, you know, like she had to stay with the coaches and we were in the village and I was having the best time of my life, you know, <laughs> um, I was like 15 or so, just turning 16. And then I got to the rink for the very first practice. And there she was, I said, mom, what are you doing here? And she said, I'm your coach. And I'm going, oh, right. <laughs> Because I wanted, you know, here I was finding freedom for the first time. And then I remembered, like, mother-daughter situations are not easy that from means. a coach, coaching and student point of view. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and Rachel, what have you got to say? Um, there's so many memories. You know, what's the funny thing. When I think about Mrs. Berga sitting there at the Granite Club with her cane and her rainbow socks. I, like, can oh. still smell her perfume. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> the perfume the perfume I will never forget that smell as long as I live oh. and then um the other thing that like really comes to mind and makes me think of Mrs. Berka immediately is listening to any ballet music especially yes. La Bayadera she made me skate to La Bayadera for yes. like three or four yeah <laughs> and I'll never forget that as long as I live and then like probably the funny moment so I was saying this to Signe yesterday I know how to say sing happy birthday in Dutch because of Mrs. Berger. because every time it was somebody's birthday she'd come out and she'd start screaming like singing it really loudly so we all know long salsa lepe long salsa um and just like the things she would say in group lessons to other skaters like oh she would be like you look like a dying animal (laughs) oh yeah right (laughs) the dying animal comment was always so funny (laughs) or the run for your life I know somebody else said that one yeah well I've never heard of run for your life whenever you fall whenever you fall she get up child get up (laughs) I remember that one and her, but she like, said one thing to me. I remember going through like a summer and it started off really rough. Like I just, I was growing and I wasn't skating well at the beginning. And it ended up being an amazing summer. I ended up competing well at the end. But um, I kept doing these run-throughs where I would just miss like every jump. And it was like just so defeating. And I would just get so upset. And um, like it got to the point where I would just get so frustrated and I would stop my program while the music was still going. And she said to me, you know, I have a lot more respect for somebody who finishes a program where they miss everything. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. skates a completely perfect clean program. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I'll always remember that actually. I think that was a really I good- I remember that too. Yeah. And that was, was with the never give up mentality. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, never give up. Uh, talking about the, the the falling and getting up, I remember her saying, "Roll over and get up, roll over and get up." <laughs> yeah, she was always she always mentioned how she taught us to fall and get up. That was yeah. like part of the curriculum. It was like <laughs> you don't just learn how to land a jump. It's like you got to be able to get up fast. Yeah. Didn't we have to like dive at one point and like I'm pretend sure. fall and then make diving. it graceful looking? I think I remember <laughs> that. I feel like that was part of all theater on ice. Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember that. Like run as fast as you can and race each other and then fall and then get up and race. Each other. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. It was actually so scary. The running so fast on the ice. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people hurt themselves, actually. <laughs> yeah, the toe picks were not great for that. <laughs> I definitely have a scar, I think, because she was using me to help choreograph. I think she was choreographing and I was just demonstrating for for a, a younger student. And she had these runs in the program. And I I hit my toe and I went prop and I still have a scar on my hip. No. <laughs> but it was it was fine. It wasn't a big deal. But it was like at the time really funny because here I am, like the older skater supposed to be able to run and like <laughs> but. Yeah, it was fun. Aww. Yeah, I remember when she, like, I, I just have, like, these fond memories every single time, like, just a couple statements, very clear, like, 
stop knitting. I don't know, Petra, if you ever I heard remember that, that one. But like, skate. I would skate. I don't know what. I didn't know stop I was knitting. I was like, stop, she, yeah. I would skate with my hands like close. Like, oh like, yeah, like oh, and like yeah. like Your skate like this. Or I don't know. And she would always yell out like, stop, stop knitting. knitting. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and with the boys, she would say, "No duck hands." Oh yeah, <laughs> like this. <laughs> <laughs> and I just remember one year we were like, picking a dress or something, and I wanted this yellow dress or or something. It was like a yellow dress, and I really liked it. And I brought it to her, and she was like, "Did you just pick that off of a curtain?" <laughs> it was just like. <laughs> <laughs> It was oh. like, I, she's like, you're going to look like a milkmaid. And then I was like, okay, um, so maybe not this dress. And then it was always like, you couldn't wear specific colors and it always had to be yeah. like perfect. And you know, when it was a good dress, when she was like, that will do. It was yeah. like, okay, you, you got like some sort of positive uh, you know, thing oh. on the back that you know it was going to be okay. But on a side note, I just wanted she to say. The same like waterfall. You remember the waterfall dress style she always wanted with the crystals that would like come yes like yes like yeah. oh mm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but on a side note i was like waking up this morning and it was thundering like it's never thundered here in life and lightning like you could see the sky light up everywhere and i was like she comes in with a storm <laughs> <You know>? yeah <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> So that was, that was nice. <laughs> well, at least mother was always direct and honest, which is, um, yes, that's true. She, which is something that's rare. He, she was not trying to, you know, pretend something. She was like totally transparent with everything. And, and I think that is a good um, characteristic to have rather than kind of going around or being a brand and nothing behind it. She was like right there. Mm -hmm. I think the life skills that I personally have been taught by her or even all of us, I'm sure, um, you know, stay with us for the rest of time. And it's the, the discipline and the dedication. And, you know, whenever I have a bad day or something, I just think about like, you know, she would always be like, it's going to be fine. You just got to keep going. And you put your like, I think, Petra, you oh, yeah, the blinders. put your blinders on. I still say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like especially with um, competition, or I like, remember she said, "Be like a horse with the blinders. Don't look left or right. Otherwise, you might falter. Just keep on going. You know, don't let everything stop you. Anything stop you." Mm -hmm. Yeah, the I do remember that clearly because I think I came to skating late. I was probably ten, and there were girls at the cricket doing like double axles at eight years old, and and. I was just like barely landing this crazy single axle. I'm sure you remember that. And, yes, um, I do. <laughs> and, and I just remember, you know, finally when you you both uh, took me on at the cricket, it was like from there it was like you know a job. Like I'm gonna really work hard. And I would just remember you saying like, you know, both of you put the blindfolds on. Don't look at those young girls. You're gonna pass them one day. And yeah. And now I, you know what? I have a lot of young kids who are in the same boat like they're you know maybe not you know the triple axles by 10 years old and they're like well am I ever going to be a good skater and I just tell them like you just look straight ahead don't right. look right <laughs> and you just keep going so I think the words are just passed on now for generation yes. to generation which is amazing <laughs> and I always remember my mom um telling me because like I went through my ups and downs as I was developing as a competitor I I think I failed my fifth test five times you know that, that was free and figure so like you know uh, but I remember my mom saying and I probably told you this Sydney or, and Paulette and, and Jocelyn when I was teaching you but um to you're climbing a ladder and sometimes you go down one step but you know what's at the top so you might go down but you know you're climbing as long as you know what's at the top of the ladder you'll be fine so you know life is full of little ups and downs but always know your goal and aim for it, no matter what. Mm -hmm. I remember her telling me that. Just keep climbing the ladder. You might go down a bit, but if you know what you want, just yeah. climb. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I mean, that sums it all pretty much. It's like, you know, that's that was always her attitude. Like, you know, stay positive and keep going and don't look at the floor and look up and all yeah. this kind of stuff. Yeah. And I think, you know, as 
you know, all of us have gone on in our lives in different directions. I think all of us kind of like are in that mentality. I know every single one of you girls on this, uh, on this meeting, and I know you're all like go-getters and really attacking life in any direction it throws you. And, you know, just like, there's no option of failure. So it's like you, you, you cry behind the scenes, but you, you keep going, yeah. you put a smile on your face in front of everyone and you just, you have to act tough. And, and that, that was what really has like pushed me through too, yeah. in that sense as well. Yeah, I just look at the, the four of you, because my sister and I are from another generation, but like strong women who are successful and part of their life was taken up with a woman like my mom. And I think she really helped to develop you to where you are now. So, you know, that's if only she was here to see, you know, she would be so proud. Oh, if it's something that mom uh, taught me, no means yes. And every time I said no, I said yes. You know, like, and, and that's a really, you know, it's a good lesson in life because when someone says, no, you can't do this, no, you can't, you just say yes inside. Yeah. And then you just move forward. And, and that's yeah. something that she always, uh, she was always like very positive and, you know, like that you could reach your goals. And, and her philosophy was if there was a will, there's a way. Yeah. And I think that's kind of what, she gave yeah. people that guidance. She gave them the tools that they could actually move into some direction in their future. And I think she really, she talked the talk and then walked the walk too. I mean, she was so engaging with, with um, peers and, and students of, of all ages. And I mean, what a role model to be Absolutely. in your eighties and nineties and have, um, people of all ages looking up to you, like going to the rink early in the morning, having uh, children all around you. And uh, yeah, she just, she lived right up to the end. And yep. man, if I, that's my goal, <laughs> you know? Well, see, so, you have a role model. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 Very special. I mean, I have one more story. I know I've been talking a lot. Oh, yeah. I just remember, uh, it's so funny because like, when we were traveling, she was in her 80s. And now looking back, I was always like, oh, come on, Mrs. Virga, like, let's go faster. And like, now <laughs> I'm, back, I'm like, oh my gosh, like my grandmother at 85, <laughs> you know, I can't keep up. And like, it's like, she, I would, I, she just never wanted any assistant until like maybe yeah. the last competition. And even then she was never let me like move if she was in a, you know, only she took a wheelchair if the you know first oh, see, oh she didn't want that at all like no gosh she was oh, like don't even she actually didn't even take the wheelchair actually we took the trolley from frankfurt yeah. it's a big airport to get to one place to another but the nice thing was she would always like you know get by everybody she's like watch we can get in first and sit down and have a drink <laughs> and i was like okay <laughs> and uh um just like really funny funny times remembering how you know at 85 or whatever like moving like the speed of sound like just oh I know through those airports and uh, it's amazing amazing but I have to tell you um <clears throat> I as you know I was team leading for a while and when my mom had you Signe she was she I was team leading her <laughs> I remember and, I didn't want to share that have, story I have, people, couple, but. <laughs> I have a couple of stories but we did a team dinner I where was it where were we? We were Where in Holland, was. in the, the yeah. Hague. The Hague. Were you there? The, yeah. Uh, yeah, you were at the final, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, I remember, like, I said to her mother, don't drink too much, because, like, she loved to have her little drinks. So yeah. <clears throat> we got to the restaurant, and, like, I was, like, bringing people. First of all, she said the F word when she tripped. And all the kids on the team loved it, loved it, loved it. <laughs> Then she got one of the skaters, Ryan, hair skater, to go into the kitchen and, and sort of get the little schnapps for her without me seeing it. So like she would, she was like drinking away and I'm thinking, you know, what's going on here with my mother? She can already you know, ah. The other story was when we were, maybe it was The Hague again, but it was like at the very end and I couldn't find my mom. I was team leading, I was trying to find everybody. I'm going, where's my mother? It was late at night. And um, I got kind of worried, but then I thought, well, I'm sure she's fine. So the next day I found out she'd been in Lee Barkell and um, another coach's room drinking beer. 
till all hours of the night. And she said, oh, it was so much fun. They had the beer cans up to the end of the wall. They were lining them all up. And but my mother's having more fun than anyone. <laughs> like partying like crazy. You know what? On top of that, just quickly, that one, um, Romania, we were in Romania. It was just oh, yeah. actually, I think it was Megan Duhamel and I at that competition only, like the only girls, I, I don't know, it was one like that. And Louis Stone was there and she lost her luggage. And she, um, you know, it was like, I don't have any underwear. So he, abor <laughs> she borrowed his underwear. And then one day I was like, where is Mrs. Burka? Like, I have to talk to her. And then she apparently sent a note because back then you didn't have cell phones too much and you know, that kind of stuff. She sent a note to tell somebody that she went on a cab ride to Transylvania by herself and she will be back in a few hours. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> disappeared. She would do, she would do stuff like that. Yeah. Yes. Told me she wore Louis Stone's underwear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, she, and she once gave you a very heavy duty coffee, a, a cappuccino yes. before a skate. Like, you know, like you normally don't do that. That was in uh, Serbia, I think. What is it? Where's the Blue Danube? Like, that's all I remember. I think it was Serbia. Serbia. Belgrade. I, Belgrade. Had, I had an espresso before I skated, and I think I medaled at that competition. So yeah. after that, she yeah. made <laughs> every single competition. I was like, Mrs. Burke, I don't drink coffee. And she's like, no, no, you have an espresso. You're going to do much better now. <laughs> and you were. And I think she probably sensed that you needed a little, um, a, a little <laughs> bit better. A pack there. <laughs> oh, lots of stories. Anyways, yeah, I think that I think that's um, I mean, like amazing. All of us like being here today. I, I missed all of you so much, and I think it's so nice. Like all I remember just looking at all of you is like you know our cricket club days and our granite club days, and just you know the music room with the cassettes, and then she would yeah. say, and it would be like. <laughs> I remember that. that we can't. It's not a Mrs. Burka memoir if we don't talk about the stretcher. Yeah. Oh, oh, my God. God. Yeah. oh what? yeah, what? that's true. What? Oh, oh that is the worst spin in the world. Oh, I love. Yeah, I remember the stretcher and then the, yeah. oh, the stretcher. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. My back still hurts from doing a million of those. And I was like, no more. I was like, it's not complete if we don't talk about the stretcher. <laughs> Everybody's been through the was great. Yeah. Spin and the taller spin. Remember oh, the taller spin? Yeah. 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 It's, it's back in now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. So, oh. I, well, thank you. That I mean, that's amazing. Does anyone have anything else? I, I have a, another call at 4.30 with uh, a client, but um, just some finishing words on uh, Mrs. Burka, like, you know, happy birthday. And, yeah, happy uh, birthday. Uh, birthday. And I, I just want to say, look at the smiles on all of our faces when we talk about my mom. So, you know, that's really what it's all about. Lovely memories. Yeah. And I do have, like, I have a little sign. Maybe you can look for it too. But um, you know how when, I don't know if any of you have had close family members pass away, but like, First of all, robins and monarch butterflies. I mean, they're just, if there's one around, it's my mom. But um, you know, on the clock, on, when it goes like one, 11 minutes after one or 2.22 or 11.11, 11, hmm. that's my mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Think about it. Yeah. And I don't see it all the time, but it happens sometimes during the most crazy moments. Like when my dog was getting um, an operation and the vet wasn't sure because uh, whippets tend to not do well under anesthetic. And I was worried and worried and worried. And at 11, 11, the vet phoned and said, your dog's fine. Oh. And all kinds of little things like that happen all the time. Or it'll just happen when I'm about to go into something stressful and I'll look at the clock, it's 3.33. So, <laughs> you know, like, I use that as my way of my mom reminding me she's always there. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so lovely. And Astra, yeah. you, what about you? Well, I I, I miss her spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, she was um, she had a wonderful spirit, and um, and I just it makes me happy seeing all of you on the screen. I haven't met you know Jocelyn or um, Avery. Avery, Avery. Mm -hmm. um, but I've met the others. But I just feel you know like 
and um, with Karen being there, just what she gave to people, I think was extremely generous. You don't get that with people anymore. Like everyone just mm -hmm. takes what she gave. And I think her spirit and her energy, it was her energy that she gave to all of you. And I'm breaking up a little bit. I know she's crying now. <laughs> no, I, I try not to before we hang up. <laughs> <laughs> but I just think I'm getting a little bit stuffy in the nose. But I just think it's the energy that she had that I think transmitted to all of you. And it was such positive energy. And I think that's something that we are missing in this life right now. And and she brought in that void that we can carry with us till Yes, I would say take that energy that she taught you and pass it on to everyone that you have around you. And maybe we'll make it a better world. Yeah. That's lovely. Yeah. I want to say one thing, actually, I feel very fortunate that I got to spend all that time with her in the last few years of her life. Yeah. When I, you know, well past skating, I was in grad school and I was driving her around to the dentist and all of her appointments. I remember. <laughs> we would go shopping, we'd go grocery shopping. I took her to the floral center. She made me push her around the aisles of the garden center in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> um, I spent a lot of time with her and I remember I, I was even practicing my master's thesis presentation with her and I remember just before she passed away I had to present the proposal to my graduate committee and I, I showed her beforehand and I'm really glad that I had that time with her. Oh, oh she would have been so proud. Oh. Well, I used to take her shopping in the wheelchair, like at the bay, like we'd get a wheelchair from the bay and she never came. And then she'd sort of sort through the clothes with her cane and then, you know, go to a, a like if a saleswoman was around to say, why don't you have this and this and this? And like, she'd be really demanding and act, like I pass, push her forward and go to the salespeople and do damage control. Because <laughs> <laughs> she was always like, why don't you have this and like what color why don't you have that you know and I go it's okay it's okay she's elderly <laughs> she never knew I did that but I damaged control behind her because she was still the same person even in her 90s <laughs> oh. anyway well we're all laughing so I think that's great like it's not been yeah, an easy definitely. year and a half for sure or more so uh, we can celebrate through some laughter yeah yeah okay. and now my makeup's all run I, I had to find it it's really old because I haven't touched it for a while and it's <laughs> I mean it's not about me but I, I just thought I would celebrate my mom with some makeup yeah. and but thank anyway. you so much for organizing this this is well, such a yeah, fun yeah, definitely. Oh, and, um, everyone's fine with COVID everyone's good nobody has it or you're all safe and being careful good that's mm -hmm. really important yeah and how's your baby Sydney? oh he's really good um he's uh awake <laughs> oh. <laughs> what a cutie and actually avery has a baby too oh, oh, okay. yeah and they're like one month he's, apart oh yeah he's 10 months it is bedtime he's sleeping now so <laughs> avery's awesome. living in, in the uk right yeah yeah that's why the time change you're in the UK? Yeah, I'm in England. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, well, how nice of you to do this. Wow. Oh, no, no worries. Well, of course. And Jocelyn, are you married or? No, no. I, I just have a boyfriend. <laughs> you're, you're still the same, Jocelyn. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Oh, no, no, no. I just... <laughs> Jocelyn's this. Everyone's the same. Oh. <laughs> So, well, thank you everybody and right. uh, I think we'll close it off here yeah. thank you so much for joining and being well part thank you Sigmi thanks thank for you. organizing oh, yeah that was really thanks for sweet. organizing Sig yeah no problem it was amazing I'm so glad to see Bye. all of you thank you okay. maybe soon we'll have a get together in yeah, person take care Hopefully. cheers everybody cheers. Yeah. happy birthday Mrs. Berka happy birthday Bye. Bye. Bye.